Among all the prophets, Muhammad was the last, as his was a mission of the greatest task. There was only moral degeneration. People clung to idol adoration for all nations. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala abdihi wa rasulihi al-Ameen. Nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The achievements of a person are not measured by the number of years he lives. They are measured by the actions he take, by the decisions he make. All of these determine what kind, what caliber a person is. Our companion, may Allah be pleased with him, that we want to look at a glimpse of his biography is one of those. We are talking about Sa'd ibn Mu'adh ibn Nu'man, the leader of the tribe of Aus from the Ansar. May Allah be pleased with him. He embraced Islam when he was 31 years old and he died a martyr when he was 37 years old but these five or six years were not to be taken lightly at all he achieved in them what most of us would fail to achieve not in a lifetime but in more than that Sa'd ibn al-Mu'adh may Allah be pleased with him was the head of the Aus tribe while Sa'd ibn Ubadah was the head of Al-Khazraj tribe. And the Aus and the Khazraj were feuding and disputing. And they were the people of Medina alongside with the Jews of Medina. Banu Qaynuqa', Banu Al-Mustalaq, Banu Qaynuqa', that is, Banu Nadir, Banu Quraidha. These three tribes alongside with the Jews in Khaybar were dominating the commercial sector in Medina. Sa'd ibn Mu'adh was young, but he was trusted by his people. And that's why they chose him as a leader. So how did he accept Islam? How was he introduced to Islam? He was introduced to Islam by a trick. Before the migration of the Prophet والسلام, the Prophet sent his own messenger to Medina. And his messenger was Mus'ab ibn Umayr, may Allah be pleased with him. One of the most handsome youth of Mecca, that is. Mus'ab ibn Umayr came from a very rich family. And he was a spoiled, soft, and handsome man. Whenever he walked a street, people knew that he walked that street by his perfume. Whenever he wanted to wash his clothes, people would urge him that they would wash his clothes for him so that they would mix it with their own clothes and their clothes would become perfumed by his own perfume. When he embraced Islam, all of this changed, subhanAllah. He left all of this and he became one of the toughest and poorest among the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Don't you remember? when Abdurrahman ibn Awf, may Allah be pleased with him, was to break his fast one day and they brought him the food and he said, Subhanallah, Mus'ab ibn Umayr was better than me when he was martyred on Uhud. We tried to cover his head with his garment because we had nothing to cover him with and his legs would show. If we covered his legs, his head would show. And so we covered him with tree leaves and buried him. And he was better than me. Mus'ab ibn Umayr was sent to Medina to call the people of Medina to Islam. And among those whom accepted Islam was As'ad ibn Zurara. May Allah be pleased with him. 
And he was from Medina, and they were doing their tours at the houses, at the tribes, at the neighborhoods, together. Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh and Usaid ibn Hudayr, they were buddies, and they used to sit together. And Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh did not like what he heard. People are accepting this new religion. It's spreading like a disease, he says. And this has to come to an end. We don't want these people to spoil our Medina. So he said to Usaid ibn Hadair, may Allah be pleased with him, go and forbid these two from doing what they're doing. Tell them they have to stop, otherwise we will do something that is drastic. The reason, he says to Usaid, you know that the reason I I'm not the one to go and talk to them, is that Asad ibn Zirara is my cousin. And I can't talk to him in such a fashion. So you go and talk them out of it and tell them to stop. Usaid ibn Hudayr takes his spear and he goes and he asks about them and they tell him that he is in this and this location. So he goes there. The minute Asad ibn Zirara sees him, he talks to Mus'ab and says, Mus'ab, be sincere to Allah and do your best with this man because this is a master of his people. And if you convince him, a lot of the people would follow him. Look at this beautiful advice. Be sincere in your da'wah. This is what we should advise each other with, not to advise each other to be afraid or to live in secrecy or not to disclose what we know to everyone. Islam is a religion of transparency and we have to advise each other so that we are remaining on the straight path on the cause of Allah Azza wa Jal. So the minute Usaid ibn Hadir comes, he tells them, didn't we tell you to stop? Aren't you going to stop? Do we have to? harm you and fight you before you refrain from what you're doing and corrupting and spoiling our people. Mus'ab told him, you have all the right to say whatever you want to say, but you look like a fair person. So how about this proposal that you cannot refuse? I'll tell you what I have. If you like it, alhamdulillah. If you don't, I'll leave you alone. So. Usaid says, that sounds like a good idea. So he puts his spear in the ground and sits down. Mus'ab gave him a short presentation. There's no PowerPoints. There's no big signs. He just told him about Islam. It doesn't take more than a couple of minutes to tell anyone about Islam. What is Islam? Worshipping Allah alone that he is the creator and no one else is to be worshipped or be worthy of being worshipped except him. All our forms of worship are directed to him and we believe that he is the creator, the provider, the one who gives lives and takes it, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he controls the universe. Islam instructs us to be good to our parents, to connect with our next of kin, to feed the poor, to shelter the homeless, to take care of the orphans and the widowed. Islam tells us not to consume intoxicants or to deal in interest or to steal or to kill or to do these things. This is Islam. Any person, any objective person would know that this is the religion of Allah. So he recited verses of the Quran and subhanallah, the transformation was instant. Usaid said, this is beautiful. What would a person do to accept this religion of yours? Musab told them, take a shower, clean your clothes and pray to Raqqa. So he went, he showered, made ghusl, purified his clothes, came and prayed two Raqqa's and now he's a Muslim. If I were in his shoes, I would say, the religion of Allah is beautiful, I'm going home. Not Usaid ibn Hadair, may Allah be pleased with him. Not all the companions of the Prophet 
They were proactive. They do not wait. Immediately after accepting Islam, the first thing he said, I will go and talk to the Sayyid, to the master of his tribe, to Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, and I'll try to make him come and you do your thing with him as well. So what happened? This is inshallah what we will find after the break. From among all the prophets, Muhammad was the last. Al Aziz, Al -Aziz. The, Almighty. the Almighty. Al Wadud, Al -Wadud. The, All the All Loving. Al Tawab, The Acceptor of Your Return. Al Razak, The Provider. Al-Raqib, the All-Watchful. Walillahi al-Asma'u al-Husna, to Allah belongs the beautiful names. Fad'uhu biha, to call him upon them. To understand more of Allah's beautiful names, join me, your brother Majid Mahmoud, on my new series about understanding Allah's beautiful names on Peace TV. Don't miss the chance to comprehend the seamless explanation of Allah's beautiful names in Understanding Allah's Beautiful Names. Tomorrow at 7 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12 p.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic ruling? Nikah. Solution or problem? Heaven or hell? Uh, there is a misconception. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. From among all the prophets, Muhammad was the last. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah and welcome back. Usaid ibn Hudayr, may Allah be pleased with him, immediately was transformed from an unbeliever, a disbeliever into Islam. And he did not sit back and relax. He thought of his best friend Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh and how to get him into Islam. So this is what he did. He told them, I was sent on a mission but it appears to me that the mission was unfair. So I will go and report to my friend Sa'ad and I'll make a trick so that he comes and you, Mus'ab ibn Umair, may Allah be pleased with you, do your thing. So he went. He took his spear and went back to Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh. The minute Sa'ad saw him, Sa'ad said to his companions, by Allah, he's returning with a different face than the one he left us with. Subhanallah, nothing changed except that the beauty of Islam and the belief entered his heart and this transformed him completely. And this is what people see and watch when a disbeliever accepts a reverse to Islam. They can say and tell that there is a difference and a positive difference. So, 
Usaid goes to Sa'ad and says that I went to them and I told them that they should not do this and they agreed to stop. Sa'ad looking at him out of disbelief, Usaid went on to say, but I heard that Banu Haritha, the tribe of Bani Haritha, they were plotting to kill your cousin Asad ibn Zurara because he was related to you. Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh said, damn you, Usaid, you didn't do anything. I've sent you for a mission and you did not do anything. All of this bad news you came back with to me, what use was it for me? Damn you. And Sa'ad took his spear, his sword, his armor, and he went to meet the two. He went to meet his cousin and that infidel, Mus'ab ibn Umair with him. And when he saw them, when he came to their location and saw that everything was quiet, people were reciting the Qur'an, no one is trying to attack no one, he, without diverting from his mission, he went in and he started shouting as As'ad, his cousin, and he said, by Allah, As'ad, had you not been my cousin, I would have shown you something that you would not like. You're my cousin, why are you doing this to me? And he looked at Mus'ab and he said, you come from your country and you're spoiling our kids, you're spoiling our people. And with a very calm voice, Mus'ab said the same thing to him. You are a man of reason. Listen to us. Listen to what we have to offer. If you like it, Alhamdulillah, you can accept it. If you don't, I'll leave Medina and leave you alone. Sa'ad said, this is logical. It's not going to hurt me to listen and hear what this man has to offer. So he got his stick in the ground and he sat down. And Mus'ab, may Allah be pleased with him, did his thing. Gave a small presentation about Islam. He recited the beginning of Surah Al-Zukhruf and they could see it visible on his face. It was apparent that transformation is near to an end. Immediately he said, what would a person do if he would like to accept this religion of yours? And he became a Muslim. Not only that, he went back to his people, to his tribe of Al-Aws, Bani Abd Al-Ashhal, to be specific. And he said, after he gathered all the people, he said, what man was I among you? And they said, you are our leader. You are the trustworthy. We trust you. You have the sound judgment that we follow. He said to all of them, then by Allah, I will not talk to any man, woman, or child among you until you all accept the religion that I have accepted. The story goes to say it was before sunset that all the people accepted and reverted Islam. The sun did not set until they all accepted Islam. So he was a blessed person. After some time, he requested the Prophet ﷺ for permission to offer Umrah. So the permission was granted. He went to Mecca and he had his ally whom he would go to and exchange visitations. And that was Umayyah ibn Khalaf, the enemy of Allah the Almighty. But at the time, he was his Arabian ally. So he went and he hosted him and Umayyah told him that if you want to make Umrah, let's wait until it's quiet and that would be midday, just before noon. And then you make your Umrah. And so he did. And they went to the Kaaba and he started making Tawaf. And then all of a sudden came Abu Jahl, the Pharaoh of this Ummah, and said, you are making Umrah and Tawaf safely after all what you have done by sheltering this fugitive, our Prophet Muhammad and aiding him. Had you not been with Abu Safwan, he's referring to Umayyah ibn Khalaf, have you not been under his protection? By Allah, I would have killed you. Now, 
This coming from the head of Quraysh and the fierce warrior and a strong tyrant. Any one of us would be intimidated, scared, but not Sa'ad. Sa'ad said, do not talk, you enemy of Allah, and do not threaten me. Because by Allah, if I wish, I would interrupt and intercept all of your caravans going for trade to the north. I will not make one of them pass. And then I'll show you who Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh is. And he started shouting at him. And Abu Jahl started shouting back. Umayyah ibn Khalaf was torn between two lovers. This is his ally, but Abu Jahl is the master of Quraysh. So he said, don't raise your voice against Abu Jahl, the master of this valley. Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh did not care about anyone. He's a fierce warrior himself. He's a brave man. He's a Muslim. He has, he's got the dignity of a Muslim. He's not going to be weak or humiliated or insulted by the likes of them. He said, Umayyah, sit down. By Allah, I heard the Prophet Sallallahu saying that he is going to kill you. When Umayyah heard this, he passed wind with a sound. He farted out of fear. He said, Muhammad said this? He said, by Allah, he did. And he went back terrified to his wife, telling her about what his brother from Yathrib, Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh, said that the Prophet had told him about him. And she said to him, by Allah, don't, don't worry, this is just a threat. And Umayyah said, by Allah, Muhammad had never ever told a lie. And if he said that he's going to kill me, he is going to kill me. And subhanAllah, he's the only one documented in the books of history that the Prophet killed with his own hands, alayhi salatu salam. When he tried to attack the Prophet and the Prophet killed him with his spear, he hit him under his neck and the man died. And they told him, it's a flesh wound. What are you weeping and, and whining for? He said, no, this is what I'll die from. And he died, subhanAllah. Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh, may Allah be pleased with him was not like any other companion of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ, when he wanted to go to the Battle of Badr, he consulted the people and he said, advise me people. So Abu Bakr stood up, praised Allah, prayed on the Prophet ﷺ and said beautiful words of support, of encouragement. Go Prophet of Allah. We're with you, we are your companions and followers. So the Prophet ﷺ prayed for him and he sat down. Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, stood up and said, O Prophet of Allah, go and we will follow you. We will fight with you till the death and Allah will grant us victory. And the Prophet again, وسلم, supplicated to Allah said good things about Umar, and Umar sat down. And he continued the Prophet saying, والسلام, people, advise me, give me advice. And Al-Miqdad ibn Amr, also from Quraysh, all of them from Quraysh, from the Muhajireen, stood up and said, O Prophet of Allah, the same thing, praising him and saying that we will follow you, we will fight to the death, and you have no problem because we will be with you. And he prayed for him and he sat down. And he kept on saying, advise me people. Only then Sa'ad stood up, Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh. And he said to the Prophet ﷺ, as if you wanting us to say what we have to say, O Prophet of Allah, not the Muhajireen, not the people of Quraysh. And he said, yes. Because the Prophet ﷺ, when they gave him the Pledge of Allegiance, they told him that they will protect him as they protect their own wives and children. And the Prophet feared that this Pledge of Allegiance meant that they would not go out of, the, of Medina with him. They would only protect him as long as he was in Medina. So the Prophet said, yes, Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh, it is you who I am addressing and wanting to hear from.
It is you, the Ansar. So Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh, may Allah be pleased with him, said, Prophet of Allah, we have believed in you and we believed the revelation that Allah had sent with you and we testified that this is the truth and we gave you our pledge of allegiance and our vows and we gave you our word to obey to comply with what you have brought so proceed Prophet of Allah to whatever you want to do because we will follow you and by Allah if you went across the sea we will follow you across the sea even if it meant that we will drown and not a single person not a single man from us the people of Medina would stay behind and by Allah we do not at all hate to face the enemy tomorrow because the Arabs know that we're truthful when we fight and we're strong when we are fought and I pray to Allah that tomorrow in the battlefield of Badr Allah will show you from us things that would satisfy you and please you the Prophet ﷺ was very joyful and happy with with what he heard and he prayed for Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh this is all the time we have for today's program so until we meet next time fi amanillah wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Muhammad, peace be upon his song The greatest of prophets is